the mind of Christ and I do hold the thoughts and the feelings of the Messiah. And that I will sell. Excuse me. I'm owned by God. I belong to God. And whatever God says, I don't move till God says move. I don't go till God says go. You've got to learn how to just flow with the Holy Spirit. Praise your way through it. And until you get an answer in prayer, don't you let anybody pressure you. Don't you let anybody make you do anything. It, it can wait. Your contracts can wait. Everything can wait until you hear from God. Some of you all up all night. You're signing stuff that you haven't even prayed over. You're signing stuff that you haven't even praised. Praising God for, for things you're getting. You're getting a house that you haven't even praised God over. And you're going to find out that place was possessed before you got in it. You better pray. You better praise your way. Putting God first in everything. I'm trying to help somebody. Put a praise on it. The reason, watch, if you can't hear what's coming from the core in the center, you can't help me possess my promise. My praise needs someone with keen ability to hear what cannot be articulated, explained. Do I have five more minutes? And I'm through. The reason, because real praise, real praise, not the cute stuff we do in church. Real praise is so personal and so private it's so intimate, it's, it's like intercourse, real praise. It's so private, it's not the public accolades. It's what a mother does when they see that car that's been wrapped around the tree and they walk into the hospital when their child's walking out. Real praise. It's what you do when test results come back that were negative and now they're supernaturally positive. It's what you do when you walk into your first house that anyone in your, you, you, that no one in your family has ever had the ability to own a house. Real praise, come on. It's what you do when you think about the goodness and the mercy of God. It's what you do when you know that the only reason that door got open is because of who he is, not because of who you are. Real praise. Real praise. It, real praise. It's what you do when you think how he rescued you, when you think how he saved you, how no man can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Spirit, how he removed the scales, how God kept you, how you should have lost your mind. Real praise. Psalm 63, 3, 4. Because thy loving kindness is better than life come on is better than life because thy loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise thee thus will i bless thee while i live don't wait don't wait everybody will say nice things come on when you go to a funeral praise god every single day that's what i'm talking about putting god first don't don't wait until a crisis don't wait until trouble don't wait until something's wrong because of your loving kindness because of your goodness in my life my lips will praise thee thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. This just means I'm surrendered, God. I totally surrender. It's a place of vulnerability where I can be naked and unashamed because of my commitment and my co covenant that I've made with him. Real praise. Anybody with me? Real praise. Real praise. A deep heartfelt release of who God is and what God has done. And, and, and the way you do that is like I said, remembering not just who God is, but people that don't know this fuss about God because they either don't know him or they don't know the way he does things, right? So that you start praising God for who he is and also what he's done because remembering God's acts are critical. Teach you a lesson about praise and I'm through. I promise I'm through in a couple minutes. Because the Old Testament concealed, New Testament revealed. That God's always teaching us stuff, type and shadow. So there were times that they had to, there were a few times that they had to remember. They had to look back. They had to put some things called a memorial. And they had to remember the acts of God. Because God knew that our mind have a, has a way of forgetting. It has a way of remembering and gravitating towards the negative and forgetting all the positive and all the good. And, and the very reason for creation is God wanted to reveal himself. So when you go out tonight, Look up at that moon and start praising God. Look up at the stars that are hanging there. Know that as this earth rotates around the sun in perfect harmony with all the planet, all the everything working absolutely perfection 
in our universe, in the galaxy, and, and, and you think about the magnitude of it, and, and you just begin to look, go, look, y'all live, we live by the ocean, go look at it, go walk by that beach and know that man and all his intelligence still only has 2% discovery of the depth of that sea. Go dive in with John and I and know that you can go down and see how incredible the stuff that you would never see here. And you still have not even begun to scratch the surface of the depths. There's so much magnitude. Just start, just walk outside and look around you and you'll begin to praise God. Look at the, look at the imagination of man's ability. When you watch a car, y'all, y'all say, man, look at that Ferrari. Look at what a man can dream up. The technology, when you call your mom, when you Skype someone over in Europe, just think about that technology of what man could dream up, and yet we, we use such a limited amount. And God revealed or he created, brought creation because God wanted to reveal himself. In order to do so, he had to be creative. The first sight that we see of God in the very beginning is not a loving God, Although God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I mean, it is in essence a part of love. But the first thing you see is not an angry God. The first thing you see is not a compassionate God. The very first thing when you start in Genesis is you see a creative God. And so out of the ground, out of the being, comes the logos. Out of the abyss, God brings forth everything. Because God wanted to reveal his power and his greatness his presence, his provision. So we orchestrate six days of creating and one day of rest. Elder Harold, I I heard you. Six days of creating and one day of rest. He orchestrates it and he establishes the cycle. Somebody say the cycle. It's called the seven day cycle and it's based on all of Israel's worship. It's why I teach feast seasons. It's why I teach because all I'm teaching you is rhythms. I'm teaching you divine appointments, which is why God did what he did. So in return, he could give God glory. He could turn around and he could praise him more because the intention for being is to praise him. So the entire intention for being Psalm 67, three, let the people praise thee. Oh God, let all the people praise thee. Praise is so important to God that prior to Adam, God praised himself. He did. He creates and then he declares it's good. God's plan is when something is done that an accolade would be given saying it is good. So anytime something is done, God's plan is, is to hear it is good if he doesn't get the seventh day accolade it delays the cycle it delays the cycle that's why the number seven is a number of completion that's why number eight is a number of new beginnings so when i praise god anytime i praise god i reflect because remember whenever i praise god i expect and so whenever i praise god when you expect it means you're pregnant So expectation is to have anticipation with hope. In the Hebrew, it's a cord-like attachment that binds me to my future. So you are hearing what I'm saying. Right now, if I brought Roxanne up on the inside of her, that being the, the, the baby within her has an ability to come into the future because what's keeping it alive right now is a cord-like attachment called an umbilical cord that's giving it everything it needs, its nourishment, its resources for life. So it's based on what God has revealed to me and what he said about the situation. Therefore, praise always produces. That's what I said. Your praise will produce. It'll bring forth. It brings into manifest. Station. It brings into exhibition. So it brings some things to an end or completion and opens some other things up. So our tendency is to cry when something's over, to focus on the ending. But don't complain what ended because every ending means a new beginning. So not only uh, does God know what you need, but he also knows who do you need. So, so sometimes you just have to get the gift of goodbye and start praising God. 
because God dismisses those who can go where you're going and who cannot hear what you're hearing by any means necessary. And God says, if I bring an end to it, don't complain about it because the complainers remain, but start praising me because when you start praising me, you're going to get raised. And I'm going to teach you the seventh day cycle. We're through with this. When you start praising, it releases God to do a new thing. So when you praise him, there's a new beginning for you, a new cycle because my praise will produce. So when I start praising, I start reflecting because what am I doing? I'm thanking God for what he just did. So when I praise God, God, I thank you that you saved me when I was 18 years old and you told me that nations would be shaken. Oh my goodness. Then when I start reflecting on what God did, then I get a hope with anticipation, with a cord like that is tied to my future. And I think, man, God did that when I was in a trailer and he brought me out of Mount Airy, Maryland and out of Damascus and put me in Fort Washington. And, oh yeah, God did that. And, and God gave me the anointing to create a bus ministry and a, to be the evangelical director for Dr. Lowry. And oh yeah, and we built that up to 1500. Oh, my gosh, I remember that. Oh yeah. Oh wow. When, then God, and, and, and oh, that's right. And then I, I started preaching and, and in 1990 in Tampa when they gassed a man with gasoline and that's right I started church with five people and oh that's right it became 28,000 people oh my goodness wait because I reflect and then I expect and I get pregnant and when I get pregnant come on then I produce and then I look back I go oh that the same God did that 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 yeah he sent me to LA and that's right right after the inner cities and 50,000 people were born again oh my gosh I thank you God. oh yeah now I'm pregnant again because every time I reflect remember I expect which means expectation is a cord-like attachment that binds me to my future. And when I say, God did that in L.A., oh, yeah. And then I, I remember, and then I went to Carpenter's home when they were having a revival. And, and I wanted to go check it out. And I remember they got, I got up to preach. And when I got up to preach, an anointing came and 10,000 people were on their face crying out for souls. And I remember that. Then the next day I was in Australia and I was preaching in Australia. And then before I knew it, I was around the world and I was in Singapore. Oh, that's right. I was in Singapore. And, oh yeah, I, I forgot about it. and I was in Germany and I, that's right, I got to Holland and I went to England and oh yeah, South Africa and Uganda and oh yeah, can, oh yeah, Nigeria and oh that's right and then and then over a million people in stadiums were getting filled with the Holy Spirit and, and they were getting the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they were getting saved and when I look back I reflect and I expect oh yeah and then God told me go on TV so I said okay and that's right I went on television and then it turned into 47 networks and when I reflect and then I expect Expect and then I come, oh yeah, and then God connected me with that, oh yeah, and then God, oh you aren't hearing me, because every time you look back, and you reflect, you expect, and you get pregnant, and anytime you get pregnant, you're going to produce, and when you produce, you thank God for what you just produced, and whatever you just produced, you look back and thank God for it, and every time you reflect, then you expect, which means you have an anticipated hope, with a cord light that binds you to your future, so when you're praising God, it's not really for what happened in the past. When you're praising God, you're getting pregnant with a future. When you're praising God, you're getting pregnant with something that you're about to birth. When you start praising God, you're getting pregnant. I don't know who's here. You've been complaining way too long. I need somebody to reflect. Because when you reflect, you start expecting. When you expect, you're pregnant. When you're pregnant, you produce. When you produce, you start praising. When you praise, you look back and reflect what you just produced. When you look back and reflect, then you expect. When you expect, you're pregnant when you're pregnant you produce when you produce you start praising when you praise you look back and reflect it's the seventh day cycle it's the cycle of accolades and then you get pregnant again so every time you reflect you are expecting it's a cord like attachments that's binding you to your future and the reason you're stuck in your past because you delayed your own cycle because you didn't put God first in your praise and you, you're like why do 